Hello everyone, this is Paul Vreeland, the creator of the All-in-One System Rescue Toolkit, and today I'm going to do an overview of the toolkit, first starting with the live CD portion, and then we'll move into the Windows Auto Run portion of the toolkit. Here we have the toolkit booting in BIOS mode, so we have several options. We can start the toolkit here, we can check the disk for defects, we can run memtest86 using test memory or boot from the next device in the boot cycle. Here we have the EFI boot menu, uh, it's a little bit different, and one thing to note is the memtest86 tool only supports BIOS booting, so it's not available on this menu. So let's go ahead and boot the utility. I will note this is Ubuntu based, uh, it's the Lubuntu variant, 16.04 is the latest long-term supported release of Ubuntu. If you're watching this video after I release a newer version than May 2017, this may be a little bit different, but for the most part the tools should stay the same. So my live CD environment being based on the latest Ubuntu long-term support does support most modern Ethernet and Wi-Fi chipsets using the network tool down here. A lot of people complain that I put Solitaire on my toolkit, but if you've ever been in an area where you have no cell phone coverage and you're waiting on a very long task using uh, the toolkit, you would very much appreciate Solitaire. Boot Repair from the good folks at Boot Repair will do Master Boot Record Repair. Clam Antivirus does not come with the antivirus definition files. You will need to download them. It should automatically update once it recognizes a network connection. However, I do not want my utility to run over 700 megabytes so that it fits on a CD, so I do not include virus definition files. Clonezilla is a great utility for cloning drives. The CPU stress test, if you're familiar with the Prime95 or Merceni Prime project, this is from them. Disks utility is great for mounting file systems, running smart checks, running system tests on the drive. Disk usage analyzer is great for showing where your storage space is being used after you mount a partition in disks. Simple calculator, it's easy to have need for that. Gparted is a partition manager if you ever need to create, copy, or whatever partitions. This password reset text file will tell you how to reset Windows passwords after you mount the partition. PhotoRec is a utility for recovering files that may have been deleted or corrupted. System Profile is a very simple system information tool that will tell you motherboard, serial number, that kind of stuff, processor. Terminal for people that like command line interface. Test disk is great for recovering lost partitions, whether you've accidentally deleted a partition or the partition table was corrupted. A simple web browser to get you online. And a simple CD DVD burning utility. Now I'm going to show you the second part of my toolkit, which is the Windows Auto Run. Uh, you do need to be running Windows for this part, so you can boot Windows in normal or safe mode. Here I have inserted a flash drive and we're just going to navigate to it and run the AIOSRT executable. You could think of the Windows Auto Run as sort of a technician's control panel. If you've ever been to somebody's computer and stuff changes around, you don't know where the control panel is or they've got it in a weird display format, uh, this always stays the same. So, When you first start the utility, you'll be on the System Info tab. It just has some general information about the system. Down here you'll have some quick troubleshooting icons, CPU, memory, and hard drive. Uh, right now they're green, there's nothing going on, but they should give you some indication about what might be going on with the computer. On the General tab, we have yet another system information tool that's different than the others. System Analyzer from the folks at Webroot. This will download System Analyzer from the website. Task Manager, Resource Monitor, both built into Windows. File Manager for Technicians. This runs a file manager that runs a system, so it will bypass NTFS file system permissions. 
This is the official way to build a flash drive with the toolkit. Run command prompt as an admin. Quick button to reboot in safe mode. Look up a domain using who is. And you can place the light version of the toolkit on the desktop for somebody to run later. Under the hardware tab, we have CPU stress test, so Prime 95. We have hardware monitor sensors for monitoring CPU temperatures and other stats about the system. Memory diagnostics will tell you more information about the memory configuration, as well as run a memory test when you reboot. The built-in Windows Device Manager. Hard drive diagnostics for checking smart attributes and running smart testing. Dead pixel test for LCD screens. Disk management for editing partitions and managing disks within Windows. Hard drive usage is a utility that will show you where your hard drive storage space is being used. Defragmenting the system drive. This will happen on reboot. The data recovery button will run photo rec and test disk in Windows. OS repair tab has auto runs to show you what runs at startup. Event viewer. System file checker or SFC scan now. Blue screen view to show what caused the last or latest blue screens. DISM repair. I don't remember the command line every time that I need to run this, but this will run it for me. <laughs> system restore for restoring the system using the system restore utility. Registry editor. Windows update repair will repair Windows update problems and re register all the DLLs repairing the Explorer icons, and running the Disk Cleanup utility within Windows. Under the Software tab, we have Sleep and Wake information to show anything related to Sleep and Wake. A Don't Sleep utility keeps the system from going to sleep if you're trying to monitor something on the screen, for example. This will run the uninstaller built into Windows. You can see product keys with Produ key. Rich copy is a utility similar to RoboCopy for copying large amounts of files and syncing two folders together. This is a very lightweight, simple web browser for when the web browser on the system doesn't work. This will run Rufus, which is a utility to convert bootable ISO images to USB. We have a CD DVD drive emulator for mounting ISO images. And again, Solitaire for playing solitaire while you wait for stuff. On the networking tab, I often forget what the command is to reset TCP IP and WinSock, so there's a button for that. This will show you the Windows firewall. You can do a port query for TCP and UDP ports to check if a port's open, you know, if you're trying to test firewall issues. This is a utility that'll do a wireless site survey by Homedale. You can view open ports or anything that's listening to an open port on the computer. SSH Telnet and Serial Console Utility by Putty. LAN Speed Test. You can view any open share files on the computer. Continuous Ping Test for whenever you want to keep an eye on a connection. This uses the utility called beeping, which actually beeps while there's a connection. So if you're waiting for a connection to come back up, you can run this and it'll start beeping when the connection's back up. Network Mapper is ZenMap, a utility for probing the network and seeing what ports are open and available and accepting connections on the network. On the Security tab, you can launch Windows Security Action Center, it might be called. Um, to see what standing issues there are in Windows Security Center. You can run an online scanner from ESET. Install Microsoft Security Essentials. Run Norton Power Eraser. Kaspersky Virus Removal Tool. Clamwin Antivirus. The Microsoft Safety Scanner. Virus Total is a website for checking a particular file against many different virus scanners. Komodo Cleaning Essentials. And I really like the ICAR antivirus test file. It helps me demonstrate to clients what their antivirus looks like when it's actually stopping a threat. This is a harmless test file. 
on the AV removal. This is for removing antivirus products that either didn't install correctly or maybe there's multiple versions installed. These are some of the most popular ones. They're all needing to be downloaded except for the universal AV remover from ESET. And my favorite part of the utility is autofix. Lots of time has been spent crafting the autofix. This allows you to queue up several tasks with several presets here. My favorite is Diag and TuneUp. It'll run the diagnostic utilities on the other pages here and also do tune-up tasks. Diagnostic preset is diagnostics only. Uh, it should only do diagnostic testing and nothing that alters the operating system. Malware removal runs mostly malware related tasks. And if you generally just don't know what's wrong with the computer, generic OS repairs, anything that's for fixing Windows problems, but not necessarily virus related. And the works just simply runs everything. And in the miscellaneous section down here, if you want to drop the light version for the client or the person to run at a later date, they can run that on their own. The light version is pretty much auto run of autofix in automatic mode, so it doesn't need any technical expertise. You just run it and it does its thing. It's not a replacement for a technician, but it is uh, very simple to use. And if you feel like listening to music while you wait or playing solitaire, you can do that while the tasks run on autofix. So the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is how caching works, starting with the 2017 version of my toolkit. Uh, there's caching built into the USB version, so if you build a USB, it'll automatically detect whether or not you're using USB or if there's storage space available, and the downloads that are required will be cached for next time you go to run them. So I'm just going to do it with Microsoft Safety Scanner here. When we click it, we'll see that it begins to download Microsoft Safety Scanner below. It'll give you the percentage and how long it'll take. So now that we're almost done downloading, it should copy it to the cache once it's done and launch the application and we'll take a look and see where that cache is located. So now Microsoft Safety Scanner has completed the download and launched. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it. And next time we click it, it'll launch automatically right out of the cache instead of re-downloading. This is a great way for you to have tools pre-downloaded uh, some of these tools do expire from the vendors. They, I have no control over that. So um, it'll check for a newer version, and if there's an internet connection, it'll update the cache. But uh, if you run the utility off of USB uh, back to back to back, it will keep the cache up to date and use the cache when it can. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you where the cache is located in case you ever need to delete it. under the extras folder on the toolkit. There's a new folder created here called cache and that shows what we pre-downloaded and all we have in there right now is the 32-bit version of Microsoft Safety Scanner and we can safely delete the cache folder and it'll just re-download whatever it needs to next time. So when using the cache, I highly recommend that you build a flash drive with 2 gigabytes or more. There's only 700 megabytes minimum required, the size of a CD. But if you want to take advantage of the cache, a bigger flash drive is warranted. And finally, when you close the utility, it should shut down this background information and automatically eject the drive for safe removal. If you're using the CD version, the CD tray will eject. If you're using the flash drive, version the flash drive will safe remove from the system so you can pull it right out of the system without worrying about having to manually eject it. And this concludes the demonstration overview of my technician toolkit, the all-in-one system rescue toolkit, both the live CD and Windows Auto Run. I hope you found it useful and I hope that you continue to support and spread news about my project.